So I want to, first of all, thank you all for coming tonight. It's been wonderful to see the conversations going on. We're going to let you get back to them just as soon as, as soon as possible. But typically what we do in this annual meeting is just have an opportunity for people to say a few things about Orca Media, talk to you. Uh, to, I know my staff and I have been preparing for this evening, so I don't really have anything prepared to say, but there are some things that we wanted to make uh, bring to your attention. First of all, drinks are all in the fridge. If you haven't had a drink yet, there's, uh, there's uh, stuff in the fridge. There's also in the studio, we set up a nice chroma key so you can sit in front of a nice underwater landscape and just have an interview or talk if you want to. Uh, we wanted to get an orca in there, so the orca stuffed orca's in there as well. Uh, there's uh, swag on the front table up there with uh, um, uh, some fridge magnets and some stickers for your car and even some caps if you'd like to wear the nice ball cap. Um, so uh, if, if some you may or may not know me, but I am Rob Chapman. I'm the director of Orca Media. Uh, so I'll, we'll start there, I guess. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, the only thing that I really like to say is what a great time it is and what a great bunch of people to work with I have here. And so uh, I would just say that my staff is wonderful. I have Zach on the camera over there now. He's our post-production coordinator. Chris Green is our production coordinator. He's over there. Uh, our newest content manager is Jin Ahn, who's sitting in the door right there. Uh, and if uh, you're enjoying the food, it comes from Jin's family and, and the new restaurant, Ban Chan, on Elm Street. <laughs> We've stepped up our game this year. Instead of the platter from Shaw's, we decided to make it a little bit nicer. So we hope you're enjoying the food. And if you do enjoy the food, make sure you go to Ban Chan and check it out. They're now doing dinner on Friday and Saturday. <laughs> as well as lunches. Uh, some other people that are on my staff here, I think I see Adam up there with a the camera. They can <laughs> and I saw Jerome over here. There's Jerome. Uh, Sue is on staff. As well as being a board member, we have a couple board members here. Uh, uh, Sue Bettman, uh, who just recently joined the board. Behind Sue is Rachel, who's on the board as well. Uh, we got uh, Mike Abadi, who's over there uh, on the board. Uh, and CJ, uh, right here, is on the board. So I'm just introducing them. I hope they'll all say something. So I'm going to do now give an opportunity for anybody who wants to say something. I will pass this wonderful mic that my staff has given me to. Hey, Richard's here. Hey. How are you? Producer. Producer. You want to say something? No. No? OK. That's a good <laughs> Larry, you want to say something? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Lauren Seiler. Uh, my wife and I, uh, my wife Arlene and I, produce the show here. Uh, thanks to Orca Media. I'm originally from the Bronx. Uh, come from BronxNet over there, um, but we produce a television program called Abled and On Air, which focuses on the, the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able, not disabled, but we uh, do all kinds of topics, and um, welcome to Orca Media. Awesome. I liked it. We're going to just go around the circle. Arlene, do you want to say anything? Need to pass. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, would you like to say something? Oh, sure. All right. Never at a loss. Is this really working? This, it doesn't sound this like this is it's what working. my staff handed to me as a microphone. Is this really working? Yeah. Well, I know, but is it attached to anything? Is it, is it like on? Okay. Hi, I'm Pat McDonald, and I host Vote for Vermont with Ben Kinsley. We started out as a half. Thank you, thank you. We started out as a half-hour show, progressed to an hour show once a week, and now we're doing two-hour shows twice a week or one hour show, Monday and Thursday. A lot of work. Um, I'm, I'm knee deep in doing an, a four series, an, a total of eight series of, um, with Jolinda LeClaire, who's the um, um, director of um, drug uh, addiction program. And she oversees the opioid uh, council. And she asked us to do a series of eight shows on the opioid crisis here in Vermont. And if you think managing and writing questions for a bunch of doctors is easy, it's not. Um, it's just something that's a little over my head, but I'm really learning a lot. We've had fun doing it. Staff here is great. I'm sure every time Chris or Zach get an email from me, they're like, oh, my God. But thank you all very much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So I'm neither a staff member uh, nor a board member. <laughs> My name is Monica Hutt. I'm actually um, the commissioner at the Department of Disabilities, Aging, and Independent Living. And when Rob told me that you all were having your annual meeting today, I actually wanted to come by to say thank you to the board uh, because we've had the most amazing collaboration with Orca Media over the past several months, um, working with, with Zach, working with Chris, working with Rob um, for a program called Stay Savvy Vermont, uh, which is targeting, uh, created essentially public service messages in the form of skits um, to educate Vermonters and uh, older Vermonters about some of the most common scams that are out there. So really working to provide some protection. And the collaboration's been great. It's the department, um, it's the Attorney General's office, it's Orca Media, who's been our filming crew putting everything together, um, COVE, the Community of Vermont Elders, and the SMP Savvy Seniors, so an acting troupe from uh, Lyric Theater, who we have been able to borrow indefinitely to produce these skits. It's just been awesome, and it really, um, you know, the power of public access and public media is so profound, and, and ORC has been great about really getting this message out. I was up in Jericho speaking at something, and someone said, hey, I saw that Stay Savvy Vermont series, and um, so as Rob, inform me they put it in the box which I know isn't called that Jin tried to tell me what it's called but some place where other public access stations across the state can get hold of programming from here um, which is just so cool so thank you very much to Orca Media and to the board that supports and makes that happen that's a nice little segue um, I'm Michael Abadi I'm from Randolph I'm on the board um, and we just got a thank you from the state to Orca and um, Orca would like to thank the State of Vermont, particularly the Public Utilities Commission, for being so supportive and realizing that public access television often gets, oh, ghettoized a little bit. We don't have access to high definition or the um, program guide. And uh, the Public Utilities Commission said to Comcast, these are things that you need to do to bring us into the 21st century so um, community access media can um, flourish. And um, presently, we, uh, the state of Vermont is uh, being sued in federal court by the Comcast Corporation. I don't know if everyone knows that. It's a pretty meaty savvy crowd. We may, may be preaching to the converted here. But anyways, so there's a motion to dismiss right now. And we'll see how it goes. Just keep, keep your eyes on the uh, news because it's a fascinating time. It's definitely a lot of balls in the air, and um, this w Vermont could uh, set precedent yet again. <laughs> What's the suit about? Um, the, the, the Public Utilities Commission um, told Comcast in order to maintain their certificate of public good, right. they needed to upgrade public access in the state. And wow. there's a list of the list of stipulations. And there's money to go with that stipulation? There's money from whom? government who's making the, uh, the oh I see what you're doing I get what you're doing um, actually um, <laughs> state of Vermont you know the state of Vermont's but you know the state of Vermont's budget is a 5.8 billion they're arguing about it looks like Scott's vetoed or going to veto but that's the number 5.8 Comcast is an 80 I think it was in, in 2017 the 86 billion dollars in revenue so um, they're doing all right and um, they do make their money from people who pay their bills, uh, their, their yes. cable bills, right? right. So um, that, I mean, that's part of the ground, part of what Comcast is saying is just that. Yeah. So it's, we'll see how the motion dismissed yeah. comes out. <clears throat> and uh, I just went up to the north, where is it? Uh, St. Albans. St. Albans, their brand new studio, knock your socks off. Oh. All new equipment, mm -hmm. all, it just, it's staggering. Mm -hmm. I was in the old studio on the same show years ago, and it's just like night and day, and I don't know where they get that money from. Well, um, it's, uh, is it 5% of the cable bill? Yes. Yeah, that's it. Uh, just um, the cable section, not the internet section. Oh. Okay. Right. Yeah, I may as well loop back around to Rob, and he can fill in all the, yeah. all the details. Yeah. But um, I'll, I'll keep it moving. Um, actually, you, you CJ? all right. So, well, um, one of the things that ARCA has done is improve the um, participation of uh, our town in meetings because we're starting to be able to see them in real time, which is very much appreciated. Working on interactive participation so that we'll be able to actually, if you can't be at the meeting, at some point we're hoping to be able to allow you to you know, get your questions in, have a moderator. 
Um, that's going to take some town participation, working with ORCA, but the opportunity wouldn't be there for us without ORCA, so uh, we're really grateful. Um, I actually, can I put you on the spot for a moment? Just because <laughs> you've got a business that may tie in. Mm -hmm. sure. So uh, Steve Scrivener didn't know I was going to drag him in to see Orca Media, but when I found out what he did and what he was trying to do for Vermont in the arts, um, I thought there might be a possible marriage. And so you may as well just explain a little bit about who you are and what you do, and <laughs> okay. maybe, it'll, maybe it'll turn right. into magic. So I've usurped your meeting, sorry. Um, my name's Steve Scrivens. Uh, I run a, a theater and uh, music agency uh, on Elm Street in Montpelier. Um, I book tours and when I met CJ today we got talking and I also mentioned I sit on the board of the South Burlington City Center for the Arts and we have a project there where we're trying to put together a 400 to 500 seat theater which would have state-of-the-art streaming facilities within it. And I didn't know you were here at all, so my bad. Um, no, but I thought it was a, an interesting um, meeting uh, and, and something that perhaps uh, might be worth having further conversations with. So um, thank you for the opportunity to yeah. say hello and uh, hello to everybody. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Richard here. I'm a producer. Well, that's because I was going to talk. I didn't want to talk about Richard projects, but what I'll talk about is the state legislature. And this has been a very significant year for the state legislature in terms of partial legalization of marijuana, in terms of gun legislation, and in terms of a whole lot more, including the vetoes. And ORCA has been the person, uh, the organization of record for that doing a lot of yeoman-like work, sitting down in some very boring meetings as well as some good meetings and some good press conferences. And I think that uh, people ought to look on the website and take a look at what's going on in the legislature. And the way to do it is to go to either the Orca Media site or the YouTube page. Does Himmler tell me why? They've said no. What? Tony? This is your show, Rob. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'll take it quickly. Um, all right. <laughs> um, I'm Rachel Feldman. I'm a board member. And to dovetail off these latest comments, Orca Media is the boots on the ground group that is reporting to people what needs to be seen in the State House, which is the actual committee hearings, the actual full legislative sessions, to let the people truly see what is happening and let them form their own opinions, rather than the pick and choose that comes from the soundbite news media. And in addition, this requires a really steep learning curve on behalf of the entire Orca Media staff to be able to cover a committee well knowing what they're talking about. I mean, a lot of it sounds like they're speaking in another language, which some of it's Latin, so yeah, it is. Um, but really, this requires dedication. This requires commitment to not their sel themselves, but to the people of Vermont. And again, if people know that Orca Media is here and Orca Media is doing this work, this will be the place that people come for their legislative coverage to know what's going on and to form their own opinions. Yes, it is a thankless job, but the thanks comes, I believe, through seeing what comes of informing people. And that's also what our shows do. Our shows give people the ability to discuss opinions, to discuss matters of importance, such as what Pat McDonald is doing. And it draws attention to issues that people may not know are actually happening here in our own backyards. And it's one more way that Vermonters speak to each other as neighbors and as friends rather than as just people that they live next to. So I'm really proud to serve here and I'm really proud of the work that everybody does. So thank you so much. Who's next? <laughs> I'll keep dancing around with the mic. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm, 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 I'm another hat. Uh, I'm from Barry, Vermont, and I run the public access CVTV. And here in Vermont, we have a team of 32 public access stations. Is it 32, 26, 25? Well, I'm a good Republican. I always add numbers. Um, I was so glad when Rob said he was coming over here to Orca because I knew that Rob was going to push the envelope for under the Golden Dome. And I forgive Rob for stealing some of my prime employees 
from CVTV, but you have an A team and you bring it across the state, these important issues. This is a very, very important hub and it reaches all parts. And Rob is uh, working on a team about streaming where we're going on the next generation because we all know cable TV is going to go away. Millennials don't watch cable TV. They're on their smartphones, Apple TV, pads. We still love you kids. But we got to keep the lights on. We have to look at what's going to happen down the road. And down the road, it's not that far away, five or six years. And Rob is on a team that's leading a plan on where we're going. Because these content, this content is going to continue and it has to keep going. And so I, I, I just love being part of this, the team in Barry, Vermont, next door to Montpelier. <laughs> but love you all. You, gotta, you guys have a great team here. Boots on the ground. I'm Jerome. I've been an Axis producer here for some years now. And uh, this place has really become a home to me as a radical artist uh, who uh, has done street theater all, all over the world in relation to the environment. Uh, I always wanted uh, to, the coverage of those events that we were doing to be much better than they were. They were, uh, the, the major media was never reporting the real intention of our acts. They were never reporting the seriousness of our work. They, um, and uh, undermining, usually, even when we did get things on the evening news in New York or in Denmark or anywhere else, they were, they were not properly reported. So in coming here, I've decided that I'm going to be the one who's going to turn that around for other people because I had, I've had the negative experience of not being understood for so many years. And as an actor in the theater, with the Living Theater, I had decided a long time ago, um, it must be like 35 or 37 years ago now, that I wanted to be the actor with the camera. So this idea of that we're coming through with streaming right now is exactly what I dreamt of, the need of, 35 years ago, so that you could actually have an actor on the stage with a camera interacting with the performers and the 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 image could uh, of various views of the actors could be projected onto the stage at the same time as everyone was playing um, so that's that's one that's one reason why I'm happy about this possibility of the streaming thing but mostly I'm I'm a, I, I have a great deal of gratitude to the that I can that I'm able here to film pieces of bread and puppet, for example, and that I'm able to film radical environmental activists in their work, that uh, I've been able to help the anti-pipeline uh, people uh, with their work. We've been able to do that here. The fact that I get support for that here feels to me virtually miraculous. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm I'm Sue Bettman. Um, I'm Rob's boss because I'm on the board of directors, <laughs> and he is my boss because I'm one of the people who films different um, meetings. And um, one of the main things I did over the winter was film the um, Ali series, the I I lifelong learning. <laughs> Uh, lectures, um, some of which were pretty great and all of which were um, the were much it was much appreciated by the Osher people, um, the Ali people that that those lectures were given this kind of attention. They they were thankful every single week they said thank you for doing this. And um, they had some really amazing people on there, one of whom was uh, Garrett Graff, who's a Montpelier kid, now grown up living in Washington, D.C., and doing 
political journalism, and uh, he did a presentation about uh, Robert Mueller, which was incredibly well attended. But I've also done uh, select board meetings and school board meetings and got to do a few of the legislative committees, which was really cool because in each of those places, you get to see the development of issues and their resolution, how they're, how they're treated and um, what people think about them. And um, this, so that, that's part of the service of, of ORCA is to um, inform the public about those issues and about those themes. And um, it's incredibly valuable. And, and uh, I think that the, the people who watch ORCA on, on TV or on the YouTube channel are very appreciative of it. Um, just to, there's some people that I haven't mentioned yet. Merrill is back from California. Yeah, Merrill comes back every once in a while when he's not playing drums in LA or being, uh, what's background? <laughs> background on some movie. What do we see when like with uh, the Breaking Bad guy and, and some shot he sent us? Of, uh, I don't know, but you just sent us a still, and in the shot was. Talk about it. <laughs> okay, we won't say a word. Uh, Emery's back there. He just stepped in. Emery, I hope you're feeling better. Emery has been helping out with us on editing. Um, so, uh, you know, just to uh, sum up, just how wonderful it is to work here. You know, I like to thank the people who actually are in behind, in front of the camera, the volunteers, the board members who come and spend the time and, and help me try to steer the ship or let me know where they'd like it to go. And as uh, mentioned, the people who are actually at home uh, and watching on cable, it's wonderful because they're, they're the ones who actually pay for our bills. So um, I think I've said everything that there is to say other than I hope you will enjoy the food, uh, that you'll stay and mingle and have a great time and talk to some interesting people. If you have any questions uh, about what we do at ORCA uh, staff and CJ, you, CJ is not coming to me. So thank you, everybody. Enjoy the food, and we'll see you next year, hopefully, if not sooner. You want to talk about it? Do you want to give people background on the series? Uh, oh, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm going to put Rob. <laughs> Are you going? Zach, you got us? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to put Rob on the spot here for a moment. The, the lawsuit where Comcast, where the cable companies are suing Vermont, is actually big news. Um, it's going to get nationwide interest and um, a certain amount of excitement. The reason is that the, the PUC actually decided to enforce something that the cable companies see as very strategic and very um, much part of their control of how we, uh, of, of our content. And there's a bit of a freedom of ability to determine what we watch that's involved with it. So it was a brave suit. And uh, Orca, along with the other uh, 27, you know, Vermont Access Network companies, made the decision to get status in that suit um, as an intervener, and were granted it. So, uh, you know, it, it may turn out that this suit is very important part of the conversation about our freedom to choose what it is that we watch and how we get our information. So I'm going to just say way to go. And, and who's, the, who's the department that would be responding? Public. Utilities, utilities Commission? Yeah. yeah. They so, changed their name. I know, I can't remember. Department of Public Service, or, well, no, it's the Public Service Board. It became the... Rob, they ruled how long ago? More than a year? Which ruling? Um, the one to the, the board. The, the board came down, uh, it was a year ago, January. Right. So uh, at that ruling, we were given, they were, told, were said that they would give us access to the interactive program guide, which is where we get our listings on the, the program guide that you see when you watch cable. And they, um, that said they had to do that within a year, which are now at 18 months or something like that because of the suit uh, and it's being held up in court. But it's uh, what CJ was saying, it's been a lot of uh, work on many people across the state uh, and it is uh, getting national attention because of the importance of it and the issues that are being discussed and, and litigated. So uh, we're getting support nationally from the uh, Alliance for Community Media uh, as well as organizations that understand that uh, the, work, the important work that Access does uh, and that we do not want to get re regulated to Siberia where we're um, channel slammed up in places. So it's, uh, it's an important decision and Vermont's leading the nation on it. So it's just, it has a lot of work and it's a lot of effort and a lot of money that's been going into it. So we may be coming, to, hoping to raise money for it. So 
So who's the attorney <coughs> taking the lead for us? Uh, at the Attorney General's office? I forget yeah. I forget who is it. because I, I went missed the one court hearing that we actually were at, so I don't know. Oh, okay. So they did hire um, a, a corporate a, a cable lawyer that we recommended the state did, so they took our lawyer. <laughs> but so we got another one, so we're now working with um oh uh, now I can't forget I've forgotten his name, but some high power Washington lawyers. Good. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're. You need to know the rules on this one. They right? and they know their stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's great. And I was uh, on the other side of this issue in my career, so that was why when I heard this was coming, I said, <laughs> "When if this happens, this is actually going to be surprisingly important because it, when you're dealing with annual revenues in the fifty to hundred billion dollar range, when you're dealing with the global five hundreds or the Fortune tens, it's, it's a deal." And it's, they have a lot of money and resources to throw at it, and we've been at it now for three years now, three, four years. Mm -hmm. And we're, st you know, there's no end in sight at this point, so we just keep plugging away. Yeah. Great. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the food. Cheers.